right, uh, workshops. So uh, workshops are generally uh, held between six and 10 students, about one from each group. Um, and it's kind of to tell one person or one liaison or one student from the group something. And then generally they go back and teach their groups that. Um, so I usually do this for a couple things. Uh, for skills, like taking data like we're gonna do today, I'll, I'll um, show one person in the group how to take the data and then they'll show the rest of the group how to do it. And um, what I don't usually do for content though is uh, teach something that the whole class should know, like well, let's say learning goal is quadratics. Um, I wouldn't do that with a workshop because I found that students get really frustrated. The student who tries to teach the group gets frustrated and the group also gets frustrated because the student doesn't, if the student doesn't do a good job of explaining it. Um, and that puts them in an awkward position. If, however, you're one of those teachers who's really good at teaching their students how to teach other people, please. Uh, I've heard of other teachers doing that and uh, I just never found success with it. But what I will do with content is uh, scaffolding. Um, usually there's some skills that they should know, but they don't. Uh, like for this would probably be graphing. Um, so I would have a graphing workshop and uh, students would self-select to come over. Um, but I also uh, make a big deal about saying that really the only groups who shouldn't have someone at the workshop are groups who are all expert graphers. Because even though uh, students aren't really ready to admit they don't know how to graph, they're also not ready to admit that they're experts. And so I usually get at least one student from every group and then um, at least those students can, can learn, relearn how to graph and hopefully help their groups graph after that. Um, <clears throat> out pretty well. Uh, let me check my notes. That's what I said. All right. So what we're going to do today is learn how to take data. Um, one of the reasons I take data this way is because it requires the whole group. Uh, it's really hard to do by yourselves, which I know most of you are, and I'll tell you an alternate way you can do it if you don't already know it. Um, and uh, for the when I do this in math class, um, it's kind of the first thing the group does together. So it helps the group kind of figure out their roles and kind of mesh together. Um, So here it is. Uh, so basically what you're doing is you have tape or a little post-it notes or anything that you can stick on the ground that will come off. Um, you have a stopwatch, which most people have on their phones, and we're having a little car go down the ramp, and we're going to put a piece of tape down every unit of time. And again, I found one, sec one second usually works the best. Um, anything less than that's too fast. Anything more than that, your ramp probably isn't long enough for it, even if you have a really, really long ramp. <laughs> because if these cars are going as fast as they're supposed to be, um, they're going to really tear down this ramp. Um, speaking of ramps, I remember in the um, no need to know next step, somebody said they need to know what the ramp was. Um, the ramp is uh, going to be about 10 degrees for mine. Uh, I recommend anything from 5 to 15. Um, you don't want to go too much deeper than that because the cars will just go so fast down, they won't be able to take any data. And if it's too much less than that, then it has to be really, really, really good car to go at all. Like this one is an okay car and it doesn't go down. By the way, those aren't real Legos. These are 3D printed Legos. <laughs> um, so every second, see so how my stopwatch? One second, piece of tape. Uh, two seconds, piece of tape. Three seconds, piece of tape. Four seconds, piece of tape. And um, then uh, what they're gonna measure is from zero, from the beginning, to that tape point. So this would be zero to the first one, zero to the second one. And that lends itself nicely to graphing. Um, it's also, um, I think physics teachers call it something special like displacement map or motion map or I don't know physics people You're gonna have to post that so that we all know what it's called Scott Murphy would know I might ask him if, if nobody else can tell me um, But it's cool because you can see that it's not linear and again when I do this in math class They've already done linear motion so they would they would recognize hopefully if they did it right <laughs> that the tape pieces are getting further apart and um, That's kind of a nice uh, thing for students to see and then also they'll see it on the graph again and they might, they might be able to explain better why it's not linear. Um, but if you can't do this by yourself, which is very hard, um, there are apps available. Uh, Video Physics is one um, that works pretty well that I've used. Uh, the other ones I haven't used, but basically it allows you to take a video with your phone and then mark points on it and then it kind of graphs those points and tells you, tells you the data, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then if I was in a more technologically enabled classroom, I might have used that with my students too. It depends on my learning goal. Um, so that's it. That's how you take data. That's a workshop. After the workshop was over, the students would go back and uh, explain it to their groups. And then uh, they probably would have more questions. Uh, but 
it saves a lot of time and it's kind of nice to have a student be in charge of teaching the rest of the group. It kind of um, gives them some authority. Thank you and have a nice day.